Okay, well, welcome everyone. Today we're going to make the uh, karaoke entertainment new English saddle pattern. Now I do have an older pattern, relatively old. It's one of the first books I published. Um, and since then I have modified my pattern. Um, I just never got around to writing the new book. And if you know anything about writing books, it takes time and I just don't have enough of it. So I'm hoping this video series will allow you to purchase just the pattern, not a whole book. And then you can just watch the YouTube video for assembly instructions. Now this is what a completed one looks like. Um, you can make it in any color, um, the leather that you have. Um, and I'll talk about first about materials and prep work. So one of the ways to be successful when making um, miniature tack um, is, is the prep work and making sure you do have the right materials. Now this is in brown. Brown is kind of hard because you have to color match all of the different types of leather and there's we've got suede, we've got tooling leather, and we've also got skyver. And so that's why you'll see a lot of black saddles because getting this to match as one color is very difficult. Sometimes I'll make and sell two-tone um, saddles uh, when I'm in the mood to make tack and sell it. <laughs> um, but this is what it's eventually going to look like. Okay, so we're gonna start with the pattern. And um, since I'm trying to get a good close-up view of everything I'm doing, I've got the camera right, you know, zoomed in, but uh, you'll see the link below to my website where you can download just the pattern for a small fee, because um, this does kind of cost me to do this. So I just want to recoup some of that. The, um, it starts out with reduction ratios. So for those of you who like the classic size, you can uh, reduce it by 25% and then you can get your classic. Um, I've also done it for the, um, uh, the what's called the P1, the paddocks, uh, paddock pals or little bits. Um, there's not too many of those anymore. I don't recommend stable mates. I've done it, but getting a fabric and, uh, I'm sorry, leather and foam and things that are small enough, as well as being able to see it, I, I only made one. Just wanted to see if it could be done, and it can be done. So if you're a stable mate lover, you'll get the outline, uh, but the materials that I'm using probably won't or will not actually satisfy that because it's, it's just too thick. So we're going to make um, the, a traditional scale. That's your 1-9 scale. That's bulk of the traditional scale. Um, but Brer is, and even Stone, and, and even people who custom make uh, horses, they'll say it's a T1, but sometimes a little bit smaller. So I have a T2. I say reduce it by 15%. And that'll, um, you know, the jumping pony that Brer has, it's a traditional scale, but it's a pony. You really want a little bit smaller saddle. Um, I leave the girth um, unreduced, um, but the, the saddle itself is, is made smaller. So knowing that you can reduce the entire pattern gives you leeway to make a fit for the right horse. All right, so um, I mean, you can even make it a little bit bigger, 10% bigger for some of your bigger horses. So you've got some room to play around with. So I did a, went ahead and um, added that as your first page. And then there's the actual pattern, okay? So it basically is by type. So this is all Skyver. This is your chrome tanned or tooling leather. This is your suede. Um, and then um, littler pieces that, um, I mean, you've got a craft foam or suede. You've got aluminum can, craft felt. And then we'll talk about what you can do with uh, the girth if you don't have leather lace, how to get the leather lace look. And then uh, for the girth wrap, because um, we're doing like a padded girth, it looks like this. So basically, it's just a it's a wrap. Um, but I'll show you um, how to do that, and that's also Skyver. Um, let's see what I do, and I know a lot of people trace, but here's here's really what I do. I go ahead and take my pattern, which is why I keep it in these little blocks, and um, I'm going to go ahead and just cut out the boxes and get rid of all of the white. And I'll do that and not make you watch and then I'll show you what happened. Okay, so here's your pattern pieces. And so you'll see that you'll need a new copy of the pattern for every saddle. Um, I find this gets, it's much better than tracing, especially on black or brown because it's hard to find a color that will show up and give you accurate lines. So what I do then is I'm gonna pick something simple. Everybody wants to know how do I make a tree? So I'll start out with the tree. Now, um, I like to use cheap materials whenever I can so that I just spend the money on the essential 
uh, quality materials that give me the best to look, right? So I use aluminum can. And uh, you'll see here, I've cut the top and the bottom off of whatever beverage you want. And um, this happens to be a particular favorite of mine. But I've cut the top and bottom off. And then um, I'm going to use stick glue, all right? There's different brands of stick glue, doesn't matter. Um, I've used different ones in the past. The only one I can say for certain is do not use uh, sticky note. Sticky note does not stick, all right? So I've cut the top and bottom off of this. I sliced it in half so that I have this nice round can. And this actually helps to shape the tree. So now I put the glue on the back and I'm going to just stick it on my aluminum can. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just cut the piece I need. And it uh, is challenging to do this with the camera right there in the way, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So um, just pardon me if I still learning how to do this video thing. All right, so now there is my tree, right? Um, I like working with smaller pieces, right? That's gonna be waste, and I designated how much of that is gonna be waste. So I'll just go ahead and set that aside, or you could do the cut now. I'm not gonna have you watch me um, do all of the cutting um, because that takes several hours. So you uh, will find that this is not going to be a one day project. It might be one day just prepping the pattern, and that's really what we're gonna do today. We're gonna cut out and prep the pattern and make sure that it's ready for assembly. So here's some, you know, just craft scissors and the aluminum cuts pretty good. And um, because I have the pattern is attached, it's not slipping, it's not sliding, and tracing can actually add, um, if you use like a really thick pen, can add to the dimensions, and we don't wanna do that. We wanna get as close as possible to the way the pattern was designed. Now it took me quite a while to develop this pattern, and I am sharing it with you guys uh, because I just, I believe in performance uh, showing and I want to make sure everybody has a chance if they want to to make their own saddles because um, I love performance more than halter I love performance okay so here's the, uh, just show you here you've got three options here for the seat back a lot of people like the hunt that's the straight and then you got the traditional which is the round um, the straight is actually easier so that may be why it became so you know, prevalent in the real world because it's easier to do the straight than the round. The round you have to deal with wrinkles on the skyver. We'll go ahead and do the straight because I'm going to try and do whatever, you know, is easiest for you guys. Um, I can do all of them just because I've done so many and that means straight here as well. All right, so there's your straight and um, I gotta be really careful to follow my lines while I'm talking. And if it gets to be where stuff's in the way, just cut it off like that, right? Just that's just trash. And then it doesn't get in the way so you can make a good, a good curve. All right, I do that a lot. I cut away excess and then I end up with a lot of little pieces, but that's fine. I already designated as waste. Okay. That is how you cut out your seat. Fairly simple, right? Okay, this is a small piece, it's panel cushions. This is just to give the seat a little bit more of a padded look back here. So it fills this out and gives it that uh, kind of roundness. And if you see that around on the side, gives it some, some cushion there. So I, I mean, nobody's gonna see what I'm using, so I'm just gonna use cheap old craft felt. I think at one point it was like 25 cents a sheet or something at your local craft store. Um, real inexpensive and um, same thing here as with uh, the aluminum just go ahead and um, use the stick glue and then cut out what you need and there you go I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside you don't need to see me cut that out okay so let's go ahead and talk about the um, suede or the knee pads knee pads do not have to be in suede if you're not going to do suede, I would use Skyver, super thin. If you're going to use suede, it needs to be super thin. It needs to be a garment weight, all right? Um, I'm fortunate to be able to have a, a tandy leather around so I can go and pick my skins. Not everybody does. So it, suede can be a tough one. Um, you know, if they don't advertise it right, 
Um, you may end up getting something that's just too thick to work with, which I've had happen. Very disappointing. Thought it was going to be a great, you know, project and then found out that it was double the thickness. So this is a garment weight suede. All right. It's still thicker than Skyver, but some people like to have suede knee pads. All right. You don't have to use suede. You can use Skyver. Um, and again, suede, uh, it's going to be the same thing. I go ahead, put it on the back side. All right. So just put it on the back. Don't put it on the pretty side. Um, let's talk real quick about uh, flaws. Now, suede is not likely to have flaws like uh, other leather, um, but you do want to stay away from like the stretch Right, we're gonna stay from away from that, and because this tag here was put on, um, you know, now I can't use that because that that has that will totally destroy my suede underneath. Um, so I'm just gonna basically make sure I pick a section that doesn't have any um, outstanding flaws, and that's where I'm gonna go ahead and glue it, and then I'll just cut out that square. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about Skyver because I there's a lot of Skyver in an English saddle. I mean, a lot. It's critical. Now, it used to be you could buy these skins and then go ahead and um, dye them yourself, and it was awesome, um, but not anymore. Skyver, the veggie pan Skyver that I used to use when I first started is nearly impossible to get, and it's become hugely expensive. So uh, that could be the greatest challenge to creating an English saddle like this. Now what I did do is I found some white, and I mean white, chrome tanned uh, Skyver, all right? Now I dyed this, okay? Uh, I do my own dyeing, and this is a lighter color than I want to use, but I want you to be able to see that even though it's chrome tanned, it took an alcohol-based dye really well. So I'll go ahead and look through this skin and I'm going to find a section that is suitable for this. Uh, and, um, and again, once I find that section, and let's say it's right here, so let's say I decide, okay, it's small enough, I can kind of hide some of this in there, I may dye it again if I have to, um, just to get it more even, but um, that's what I'm going to do is, is just go ahead and... Um, Get myself a section that's kind of flat, it's free of as few, free of as many, or has as few flaws in it as possible. And then, um, I'm thinking right, right in there is probably a good place. So I haven't, this is a new skin. So I'll just go ahead and I'm gonna glue this on. There's gonna be waste, um, but this wasn't that expensive. I bought it by the pound and it weighs next to nothing. Don't remember what it cost, but so I'll go ahead and um, these two pieces, I will glue them on and then I will cut out the squares. Okay. Not the whole pattern, just the squares. Get it free of the skin. Okay. Okay. So this is for the saddle padding. This is to uh, give it just a little bit of height um, and make it um, look like it's uh, stuffed correctly. And um, I've also included knee blocks. Um, that was one thing that was requested on my uh, last saddle pattern that was missing. Um, on that original saddle pattern book, um, I recommended using uh, craft foam, okay? And I'm still gonna say that for most people. It, they, you buy it in a sheet. Um, it's like a 16th of an inch. I mean, it's really kind of thin. Um, but it's the thin stuff. You used to be able to make like refrigerator magnets or you could decorate picture frames, you know, lollipop picture frames or whatever else it was used for. Comes in different colors. Um, this is all I really have left because uh, people who bought my book were making recommendations to each other on what they could use uh, because they didn't like the corner. All right, they said that was too stiff. Now, one of the things you can do if you don't like the stiffness of the corner is just, you know, get a pair of scissors and go ahead and cut that corner off it and then round it. So, um, but once I used up my craft foam, um, I used what people were suggesting and that um, is an alternative that if you have it is actually works really good. Um, now they said chamois. Okay. Chamois is a type of suede, uh, that is used to wipe down wet cars. Okay. Chamois is also hugely expensive. I don't necessarily say grab mom and dad's chamois or dad's chamois and, and use that. Um, but if you have some, uh, suede, <clears throat> now I have like, um, a lot of people give me, well, when people pass away, I end up getting in my family, I end up getting the craft stuff. 
And so, or you can buy it on the internet too if they've got scraps, right? Um, and your scrap sizes, I mean, that's, that's how big it is you need for each saddle. So it doesn't have to be huge pieces and it can be scrap and it, it doesn't even have to be pretty. I mean, this is a very ugly piece of suede, but um, I was showing you here, it's the same thickness and that's what's important is the thickness, okay? Because that's the third dimension, because we're creating a third dimension sculpture in leather. And and you wanna make sure that we, we get the thickness right, okay? And this is why for Stablemate Tack, um, you can't because um, this is just way too thick for that third dimension. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this. Uh, it's one of the pieces of scrap. Um, and I'll just go ahead and, yes, I'm just gonna go ahead and glue it on there. Find a place that's, you know, most consistent, uh, probably right there. See, so even if it's on a fold, that's fine. And, um, and then I'll cut it out. Um, and I'm not gonna make you watch that, but that is what I would use for, uh, in this here, I'm gonna use for the uh, padding, okay? Okay, let's talk now about um, chrome tanned or tooling leather, two, three ounce. Basically, that's the way they uh, rate leather, and it is weight per square foot. So a two, three ounce is thinner because it weighs less than a seven, eight. And that should help you uh, make your purchases because you want these numbers to be small. Two, three ounce is really the largest you wanna go for model horse tack of any kind. Um, smaller is better, right? Okay, so two, three ounce, I've worked in either chrome tanned or tooling leather. I prefer tooling leather because I can just buy that skin and I can do my Western saddles with it as well. Um, <clears throat> with chrome tanned, um, it's, the finish is different and, and you'll feel it. It's um, not as, um, not as stiff um, and it's finished. It's always gonna come pre-dyed, okay? It's dyed, it's finished. But the problem you'll find um, is that um, the grain, I mean, this is a good grain pattern. You can't really even tell. I don't know what animal it is. It's probably cow. Um, cow, goat, sheep, and in Europe, it's not a big deal. In the U.S., it's a big deal, but horse also has a really nice grain to it. I'm not even sure what animal this is, but if you look at it, it's this grain is totally unsuitable. I mean, you wouldn't, um, if I can get even, you just, I mean, just look at that. It's pebbled. So this would be inappropriate. See, it's not, it's not in scale. That, they would look like big pimples. And so don't, you know, when you're picking your leather, make sure it's something that is very fine grained. Here the thing is, that is my Skyver color, right? And uh, it, it doesn't match. And, and then this is also, here's my suede, you know, it doesn't match. So I, I don't wanna use this. I mean, I could dye it to match because I have dye that would do that, um, but I'm not going to, okay? We'll use this on something else, probably an antique side saddle or something. Um, okay, now we'll talk about um, vegetable tanned. I like vegetable tanned, I work with it a lot. I think it gives, um, there's a lot of um, versatility to this leather. Um, not only can you tool it, but it takes uh, details better, like if you want to stitch in um, stitching holes or poke in stitching holes, you can, it takes it better than the um, chrome tanned. Now here's, uh, this is your standard two, three ounce, okay? Um, you'll see there that it's um, stiff, right? No stretch, which is really what you want. You want something, for your saddle skirts that doesn't have any stretch to it. It's it's the body, it's the drapey, it's um, important for that. It's also got some weight to it so that it lays heavily on your model horse. Now, um, I'm showing you this because it, when you go shopping for your own skins, you can also go and in the two, three ounce, get something that's just a little bit thinner, more on the two than the three. So um, Here's a, uh, one that I, I did and um, I dyed, right? And so you'll see it can take the dye a little sketchy. It has flaws, all right? There's going to be flaws. You can't get away from that. You're never gonna find a perfect skin. Usually they're on the edge, not in the middle. Uh, some of these are production holes that were made to, to be able to stretch the skin while it was dry, dry, eh, drying. And sometimes it's it's animals. They get uh, bit by things, right? Little mosquito bites and things. So that's normal. You're going to see that. So when you go to pick 
you know, what you're going to uh, put this, um, where you're going to put your pattern piece, then you're going to want to uh, pick an area that is, um, is free of those natural um, issues as possible, right? So this is the color that I'm working with. This is the skin that I'm going to use, and I've gotten a lot of saddles out of this. So I'm just going to, you know, look. See, I don't want that. That's got some holes in or some uh, natural uh, problems with it. Um, this is relatively free in this area, so that's what I'm going to use. I will flip it over and see if I've got, you know, okay, that's going to work, right? This area is about what I need right there, so I'm fairly certain. So let me get these a little bit out. Oh, there you go. So I'll probably put it right about there. And um, we're just going to glue stick. Like that. And then I'll go ahead and cut out the square. I am using some some leather cutting scissors, so these are very sharp. Um, I've also used my um, sewing shears, which um, you have to get the really good ones that can go through a good, you know, eight inch or eight layers of fabric. Um, if you don't have good scissors, it's painful to do this because you can't get through without giving yourself um, like writer's cramp for scissors use. I don't know, scissors cramp. Um, the only thing we really have left is this. Now these billets, I would only do in a two, three ounce. The, um, this has got some stretch in it and it also doesn't sky very well. See, I would not, and it might stretch enough to break. Um, so I would only use vegetable tanned for this. If you can't, uh, get a vegetable tanned that'll work, then what I would recommend is to just um, plan on putting in um, leather lace uh, for your three billets. You really don't need three. Um, two is all you need um, in the model horse world, but people like the realism, so I usually put in the three. So if you don't, just plan on um, you know using leather lace. Now these here could also be leather lace. So I leave this piece for you to decide what have you got. Okay, so for the tooling leather, when you're cutting it out, it, it works better if you cut the pieces um, into separate pieces, okay? Because you'll be fighting with the stiffness of the leather. Most of these are pretty easy, uh, not an issue with cutting out, but some of them, like this tiny piece here, um, you're gonna wanna make sure that the um, paper doesn't shift and that the glue doesn't undo. So is, uh, you wanna make sure you hold the paper in place. And we'll just go ahead and cut around, show you. Um, this is actually sticking pretty good, but you want to be careful that you don't, <clears throat> you want to feed the edge into the, the scissors blade. And um, see there, I didn't force that. It's okay to have little pieces, right? Um, it's especially important when you're doing um, these pieces here, which have a lot of curves. Um, it's just easier if you try and, you know, break away some of this. If you tip snip, make sure the tip um, of your uh, scissors are right where they're going to snap closed. Otherwise, you'll get, uh, it'll be weird over here. Um, and then this one here, I'd approach from this side. Um, and you see if I'm turning it, the way I'm turning it, the paper's starting to come off. So I'm going to hold that paper to try and prevent that from happening. When you do this curve, feed it straight to so try to straighten it as you're feeding it into the blade um, this one here can be a little bit tricky uh, there's a couple things about it we do keep the knee blocking all right so go ahead and keep that we'll trim it up a little bit later so that it fits better get a more custom fit and then we'll go ahead and remove that little tip there and then what I'll do that. I'm going to go ahead and cut all the way through the center here and um, that'll help keep the paper in place. 
Right. Really quickly, this is kind of tricky in the center here. So turn, 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 turn. Feed it into the scissors. Turn. Now we can go straight. Okay. And that um, should help with some of the stress of this. Uh, it's very stiff. Um, you can have this in the um, chrome tan, but usually the tooling leather is a little bit harder. And I'll go ahead and do the outside. Feed it into the scissors. Straights are easy. Curves are the challenge. Alright. Like that. And then we can pad. Okay, so these are all my tooling leather pieces, and all of them are going to need a little bit of something, or most of them, not all of them. Most of them are going to need a little bit more work. And so, I'll show you. We're not ready to take off the paper yet. For both of our jockeys. I'm going to get them on a, uh, a wood block, so I don't ruin what surface I'm working on. And I'm going to take an awl or a needle on a stick, and I want to make this hole. And that's going to be for your bolt and stirrup bar assembly. And then here too. Okay. Then we can go ahead and take off the paper um, on this piece. Now, the thing is, I like to thin down right where it's going to meet the uh, seat, right? Skyving curves is more advanced so it's not required but if you know how to do it or you want to practice on some scrap for a while and then try it on your actual piece um, you're going to thin that's what skiving is is just thinning the leather right and i'm going to just take off a little bit i'm going to do it being very careful not to go all the way through i don't want to disrupt the other side I just want to get some of this off right here on the edge okay um, now I'm just using this is a scalpel number 25 blade number four handle um, you can use an exacto knife I prefer the flat handle to the round one which is why I'm using the scalpel um, but go ahead and get that again if you want to see it you can like that one is pretty typical, one side's usually easier than the other, and just the edge, maybe about a sixteenth of an inch, no more than a quarter, thinned out. So the other side looks like that, right? I didn't get any of the um, actual right side, I just got rid of the thickness in here, so it's, it's probably about half as thin as it was before. Okay, so your next piece that we need to work with is the skirts, all right? We need these little slits here. These are for your um, stirrup leather holders. And we're just gonna kinda, yeah, you definitely want a board because this will destroy whatever you're doing it on. I do it that way and because of the thickness, I go just kind of in the other direction to make sure the very tip is clean. And same thing on this side. And then, turn it around and make sure that the cut is clean on that side okay and so I don't know if you can see those hard to with um, it's dark but um, you can see there's little slits there all right so the next thing um, we're gonna try it, or next thing we'll do is remove these now I apologize I should have put another line here because I want you to cut these out um, don't need the bulk with an important part of the structure in my old pattern. It's just unnecessary in this new one. So we no longer need those to help hold the tree. And we're going to try to go around this way. 
just get those little corners out. And there, it's gone. Look to the other side. Now again, advanced, if you um, want advanced feature, you can go ahead and pull out this paper. And what we will do is skive right in on this curve. And this again, for advanced users or advanced tag makers, because um, you have to be really careful when you do this, you do it at an angle just get a little bit of that off of there all right so you can see I've thinned that and then I'll go ahead and thin this side without skiving my board <laughs> I'm gonna get my board thinner too all right. Okay, so now we need to sky our billets and um, the grit straps. I uh, don't need to have paper for this. You can pull that off. Um, but you want to put this on the edge of the board. And then it only really needs to be like the last inch or so um, where the buckle is going to be. Be real careful. Do it without going all the way through. And sky throughs are happen all the time, but I'll try not to do one here. Let's see. Let it cooperate. It should be quick. It's always easier to skive at the edge of the board. Next is the Martingale Center. Um, do that after the saddle's assembled. Show you how to do a, just a standard Martingale with a bib, uh, bib running Martingale um, attachment. Um, but I'm going to take off the paper, and then I'll just go ahead and kind of thin this. There we go. Just a little. Just from here to there. A little bit. Okay, so when I was cutting these, I um, cut actually three equal. And you can do that, and then you can pick the prettiest one for your, for your center. Um, on two of them, you just have to skive the ends about an inch. Believe it or not, this is a sharp blade. Alright, and then other side. Because when that folds over, then it should be about the same thickness as, as one as this part here, okay? And that way the buckle will lay flatter. It just looks better. So we'll do that to two of these. And then for your center one, you need to skive the whole thing. It needs to be thin. Otherwise, it won't seat right in the channel we're going to create in the, in the lining. So we're going to try to not skive through. And thin is good because it's decorative. It doesn't even have to be strong. So just When leather cooperates, you'll find a sweet spot and it'll just go right through. Um, this leather does not have a sweet spot, so 
I'm trying to make sure I keep my blade straight so that I don't end up going downwards into the um, front side. And, oop, found a sweet spot. All right, there we go. Beautiful. All right, so that's your nice thinned um, center for your uh, girth. Okay, so the next step would be to go ahead and remove the paper on everything except for the saddle tree, okay? Most of this paper, most of the paper will just peel right off. Um, Skyver can be a little bit mm, harder, but so far it looks like my Skyver is letting go really well. Let's see how the suede takes it. Ooh, suede's gonna be difficult. All right, suede took it pretty good. Um, so it should be fairly easy then just to go ahead and peel the paper off of everything except this. This keeps its paper, okay? Um, so I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, almost done with cutout and prep. So these pieces are the tooling leather. You want to pull those aside. All the other pieces, you can put in a little baggie to store them because this is not a one-day project. You don't want the pieces to get lost. Um, here we go. So, tooling leather, especially when you dye your own, um, a dyed of any kind, if you notice, this is not brown. This is my veggie tanned colored leather. It's not this color. And for some of these pieces, that's significant. That's a significant piece of finish work that you really need to take and take into consideration. So these are gonna be covered up. These are my knee pads. I don't need to do anything with those. Nobody's ever gonna see the edges of those. Um, won't see it on the billets either. They're gonna be hidden underneath, so I'll go ahead and put those aside. Um, and, and really only on the ends will you see it on these. So one of these, and you pick your prettiest one, not that one, so I'm gonna pick my prettiest one. Um, well, we're gonna pick that one. Okay, Doesn't, this one here, I can cut off part of that. So um, pick my prettiest one. This is my Martingale Center. These are my skirts. Um, these are my jockeys, my skirts, my martingale, and my, my center for my girth, okay? Now I have to do something to finish those edges. Fortunately, I don't have a leather that has hair. And when you get it, you will know what I mean. It, it's like when you, when you um, like, skive it like this, it literally has hair sticking out. It looks like it's got um, a crew cut on it. And you'd have to clip all those off, right? So this is pretty clean. It's a good skin. Um, I mean, if you pull up like this, you'll see, let's see if you can, so I pulled it up, pulled up the, oh wow, can you get into that, see those hairs? All right, um, so we could trim those, um, but they're tiny, the glue will probably hold these down, um, but I'll just see if I can't kind of just trim them a little bit. So I recommend always doing that. And this is when you're working with tooling leather. And it's especially bad when it happens wherever you skive, okay? So we go ahead and um, do uh, get rid of any hairs um, on these. And yeah, let me see if I go like this. I've got these. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't just clip those off. A um, little piece of finish work that's... Oh do what I just did. Uh, I think uh, small enough we can still get away with it. Yeah, not too bad. Okay. So try to trim those hairs. Okay. So now these, we need to do something about the color because the color, um, is wrong. I shall tell you different ways to do it. Okay, you've got it's called edge coat. Okay, um, brown, right? So I'm going to do the same. Make sure it's the same color. You could do black, but it'll be obvious. So brown edge coat. Uh, it's stinky stuff. Um, you just tap it on um, around the edges. You can use 
the actual dye, uh, the same color that you used. Oh, by the way, these rubber bands hold my dedicated brushes on, so that's why they're there. Okay, so we've got a, a, a dark brown pro dye. This is, um, you know, just kind of, just, you know, a little bit of dye on the brush and then just kind of um, go ahead and do the edge. Um, that's one way, another way. So less expensive and less smelly. Well, I know, pro dye actually is pretty stinky. The other thing is Sharpie. We love Sharpies, right? So I, and you want the one that has, um, where are you, this kind of tip. See that tip? I'm gonna see if you can go up a little bit. All right, there we go. So I like this, uh, not too stinky, pretty easy to just go ahead and using the edge. You see that, see the difference? And this is something that'll be no, that is more of a subconscious thing that people notice. That there's just something about it that's not real scale. And um, see how we got that. And we um, definitely need. I think this is where it'll be most obvious, right? So just gonna go ahead and color that. You can get brown sharpies. Um, stationery store supply stores have them. Uh, usually you can pick whatever colors you want. Um, sometimes you, could, you have to buy like a pack of you know 18 colors to get one brown. Um, and uh, so you have to look for them. On occasion you can find a two pack. They do dry out really easy. Um, but you should be able to get a couple saddles. Now I only have to do the edges of people they are going to see. All right. Um, don't have to do in here because that's going to be all covered up. But you see how quickly and not very um, stinkily we can get this uh, done. Now a uh, trick is I like to put my right side forward and, um, and then if I slip, usually it'll, I'll slip on the back, right? And I won't mess up my right side. Um, it doesn't happen often now because I've done a few of these. So we'll just see. And then we're gonna quickly do our little Maybe people think I'm nuts. Maybe me sharpie on leather, what the use whatever tools work. All right, and then We get the point, right? Okay. This is the super detailed work. All right. Um, we're gonna see how close we can get here, and if I can even do this without blocking. People like uh, judges like to see detail, and and for live show quality, they expect to be able to see the stitches. Um, somebody uh, did it a long time ago. I don't think looking at any picture of any saddle that I've been able to see the stitches. Um, in fact, if you could see the stitches in the real world, they have to be at least an inch apart and that saddle would fall apart in no time. But something weird in the show world is that they, they want to be able to see stitches. I would prefer just to go ahead and wet this and then tool in a stitch line. All right. Um, and if you know how to tool, you know, I'd rather, there we go. So I'd rather, yeah, get them wet and just go ahead and tool in my stitch line um, and just make it a line or a double line. Or, you know, you could line all the way around, pretend that it piping is all the way around the thing. Um, I think that's more realistic, uh, but most of the saddles that, and I, granted I haven't been in the show ring for a while, but the English saddles that seem to win had those little details as if seeing the stitches proved that there was hard work done. I don't know. I disagree. I've never judged a, a show before, so I can't really get mad at them. Um, so I'll show you how to do the stitches. And I'm using needle on a stick. Um, this is going to be interesting because the camera's in the way, but here we go. Uh, very simply, you're just going to poke little holes. All right, and you want to get it as close to the edge as you can. And I don't have, let's 
see if I can. All right, and then just a little bit. I'm out of practice, guys. I, like I said, I don't do this. I don't do the stitches. I do lines. I think lines are more realistic. Um, but I'll go ahead and show you how to do this. And I only do stitches where I would actually think something is stitched. So I know there's going to be a stitch line. Okay, uh, making sure that this, the knee pad fabric attaches to the skirt. And so I will do that um, to show that that's what happened there. Um, this area here is going to be all um, covered up, so nobody will see that. And I'm not going to pretend I've got piping all the way around, so I'm only going to do it around my knee pads. Okay, you only put the holes where there's an actual seam line, and this entire thing would be sewn onto the seat piece. I'll go ahead and do both of those, and I'll do my skirt, and then once we have the holes in there, um, that detail work is done, and um, we'll work on assembly in the next uh, episode.